hi everyone it's cindy welcome back to mass make march here at studio lou we are on day 17 and we are making rolodex cards for our journals so i'm not actually going to make the rolodex cards mainly because i don't need to because i have this thrifted pack of them from goodwill um so i'm just going to work through this pack um, of my existing ones so if you do need to make them it's not that difficult to do to be honest they don't have to be exactly this um, chances are you're not actually going to be putting them on a rolodex holder but you can and if that's the case you can um you can use a hole punch to create your you know these two holes let me just take one out i'm not i'm gonna try to endeavor not to get the whole pack loose <laughs> okay so um you know you can create two holes here that don't have to necessarily be square um happy planner does have a punch that does these um but yeah like the the, the other thing about rolodex cards is they have these two slots if you want to put a business card in them i don't think that's too important what do you use them for well what i use them for actually is usually pockets and tuck spots in my journal so that's what i'm using them for today um my plan is to collage with scraps on them and i'm not going to go on top of the the tabs up here i'm going to leave that part alone and at the end of all of this i'm going to grunge these up in my grunge box with coffee to just give the whole thing like a bit of a grunge because you know obviously <clears throat> this um upper part this white part is going to be like too white and boring um so yeah i want to keep this project simple so that i can make lots of these um use up scraps and then come back to it all and um have a pretty easy job ahead of myself just grunging them up i might use a little acrylic spray we'll see we'll work that out in the end right so that's just a bit of vintage wallpaper. Um, that's my art glitter glue, there it is. And then I've got my, my box of like little snippy things that I cut out from different things. Like they're fussy cuts, they're like little stamps and tickets and what have you. Um, so I'm probably going to like, you know, use a few of these. You can obviously like hang them off the side. There's like no um, reason not to. Like there's not a need to keep the border or anything because like I said I make these into um, like pockets and things. So I kind of want them to be a little different shaped. Just gonna get my ink here so I can ink you know, and if you don't want to coffee grunge them, you can clearly also do that. And it allows you not to have to worry about like covering these persnickety pieces, you know, it's like you can just quickly ink it as well. Um, yeah, so let me check the time to make sure I don't go over today. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so we had a really crazy storm last night where I live. Very, very snowy. My husband's actually outside um, shoveling right now with the kids. And I'm not, thankfully. Although I think he may just have texted me. One moment. Okay, sorry for the stitch. I had to <laughs> go and get my son because... He has had enough of the snow, but my daughter, as always, she wants to sh like shovel our entire neighborhood. So in the kind, the spirit of kindness, <laughs> that is what my husband and my daughter just did. She always wants to shovel everybody's driveways with them. Like she's funny like that. So. They did our two neighbors across the street and our one neighbor to one side of us. And then she had like a, like a five foot tall snow fort built. And, um, yeah, then they bought her hot chocolate. So she's having a great day. I'm having a great day cause I'm not shoveling snow. Yay. My son doesn't have such a 
let's stay out here and shovel spirit as my daughter. <laughs> and I can't say that I blame him at all because yeah, I'm like very tired of winter in March. Oh, but that's Canada. I feel like I want to put one more thing on here. I'm trying to decide what that thing is. Hmm. Maybe even a little bit of coffee dyed paper right there. Key. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I need to reset up how I how I was here. <laughs> So Rolodex cards, I often find them in thrift stores. And for the longest time, I was looking for like a Rolodex card holder because I, I had this idea, like I want to fill up a Rolodex card holder with a bunch of artsy Rolodex cards. But then like I just, I haven't. And then I, I couldn't find one for the longest time. And then I did find one. And now I just find them like constantly, constantly. So... Sorry for the break. There might be chocolate chip banana bread being consumed in this house because it was a long morning. So I thought that I would make some chocolate chip banana bread because the kids love it and it's good to have a nice warm treat after shoveling. And I'm just going to put um, this little snippet here another place or maybe another time. Okay. this large this is like a large scrap but so that would be wasted on there I think um I also have all these little bits of paper so cute you yeah, let's let's use that one going to need a new blue book soon. of some sort. Maybe a butterfly. I have these little branches too. These little, that might be cute actually. I'm just gonna go with the branches. It's funny like the little snips that we hold on to. This is from a scrapbook that I got at an estate sale from the 1920s. And it's funny how these little scraps just kind of transcend and they will live another hundred years maybe, who knows, probably. Okay, let's do another one with that same paper scrap because it was cute. I love these little petite florals. this little opera glasses ad that would be cute I have all these like pretty freshly cut out things from um, some ephemera I was making recently for a, a journal that will be coming out pretty soon that's good 
any more of these that are long enough to cover the whole base. Let's see, I think we do. That's a few of these papers. That will work beautifully. So I, <clears throat> my exciting news today is that I got the skating lesson that I wanted to sign my daughter up for. I was on like a waiting list. So like our regional um, community center, they like, they do this thing where they post um, certain, like all of the classes that are available for the upcoming season <clears throat> they post them on I think it was like February 20th that you could look at them and then you couldn't book them until February the 27th but like what happens with this weird way that they do things and the fact that like clearly our municipal government does not invest much in uh, technology <laughs> Like you will try to log in because they post them at like 6 a.m. on the 27th. And so at 6 a.m. like I get up super early and I try to like, you know, book these classes. But I'm obviously not the only person with that thought in mind. And um, so what happens is like, you know, this time I thought of a few tips and tricks. Like how can I make this faster? And I thought I'll get the direct link to the actual class that I want. Then I don't have to navigate through the uh, system to get there. And like they give you other tips, like have your payment already added to the system. I'd already done that, you know, all these other things. And so I did it this time and I got the first one to go through in about 20 to 25 minutes. And like, it's, ridiculous so like what happens is and I've probably talked about this the last time I did it so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself and you've already heard my my foibles but like I am um, the last time I did it it was like it took so so long and this time it still took long but like I did get it was a little better um because like what it does is um when you go through each step for whatever reason like you know you've got to choose the family member that you want to be in the class and then like you know you have to hit okay to something like there's about four screens five screens that you have to go through until you get to the final payment screen so when you go through that whole process like for whatever reason it just it makes you do it four times like it just keeps timing out and like sometimes it will crash which is really frustrating because it like it usually like will just completely empty your cart and if you're trying to book more than one thing which is i mean a superhuman challenge i booked two and it's like whoa it took me an hour and a half to book the skating and I couldn't even get the one I wanted and it was weird because like I logged in you know right at the 6 a.m. as soon as they go live I was I was logged in and um, a lot of the classes already showed as full and I'm like how how are people faster like than me you know I mean I know this happens with like concert tickets and that kind of thing but this is like swimming and skating lessons for goodness sakes but I'm guessing there's just hundreds of people trying to get like tens of classes or something. I don't know. Must just be a lot of people and not enough to go around. But the good news is, is that I got an email because I got waitlisted for the skating lesson that we wanted closer to our house instead of having to drive all the way across town. So now I just have to wait until Monday so that they can like respond to my email and give me a refund on the one that I'm not going to be taking because I just had to like essentially rush and accept the waitlist because it's only good from like 36 hours like from the time they send you the email and then the spot goes to somebody else so I've already paid for the initial class but like now I've paid for two so I want to get a refund on the other one <clears throat> So yeah, it's 
It's hard. But I'm sure that won't be too much of a problem. I'm sure they deal with that kind of thing all the time. At least that's the hope. <laughs> I thought I would take the risk. I'm like, worst case scenario, they'll just credit my um, recreation account and that's fine too. Because I will spend that money in recreational stuff anyways. But I'm very thankful, even though it's a relatively inefficient system, I'm very thankful for our local recreation um especially the staff because they're awesome but like you know the cost is a lot less than what you would pay for private classes and i like that <clears throat> okay then i need an embellishment for this mm, no I'm glad I have all these snippets here because they do come in handy. It's a little cigarette card. That might be cute. Let's do that. This is from my Digitals of the Wills cigarette cards. They are on my Etsy shop if you are looking for cute little variety um, cigarette cards try to pick up things like that at estate auctions whenever possible. Um, do I have any more? These are all, will these all be nice long backgrounds? This one, not quite big enough. It's so cute though. I love that paper. These ones are good though, I think. Yep. I'm just going to use these papers up because they fit so perfectly. Though I should be using things that are in my, my scrap bin too. But at the end of the day it's okay because it all takes up space and it's all for the same thing. <laughs> cabbage dyed calendar. I also dyed some paper today. I did um, these yellowy pinky yellow kind of papers and um, coffee dyed paper just because I'm out of just regular coffee dyed paper. in the background. Let's try to layer a few things here. I have so many things in these little snippet bins. Another thing that would be nice to use here would be like stickers or like little stamped elements. Although I don't have a lot of little stamped elements right now. I want to work on making some at some point. <clears throat> that's one of our, that's one of our days actually is making stamped elements. So we will work away on that. I think on the last day maybe. Yeah, that's cute. Okay. Let's get this glued. I 
And this morning I actually had to um, move around my ephemera boxes and stuff because I'm definitely building ephemera. Though I did use, I did use some because I'm using some of what I'm making right now in one of my journals. So. I'm sure for those of you who follow my videos, you probably see like, oh yeah, I saw her make that, and then, <laughs> and then you see it end up in a journal. So the good news is, is that this stuff is getting used. Um, oops. These papers are so cute. These are like little Korean paper shop papers. There's a little shop in Toronto in little like Koreatown and they have the sweetest papers. I always like getting like little paper packs kind of little tiny ones like where you go to like a shop that makes their own paper and you can get like a little sampling of their papers. It's always a lot of fun. I think after I record this video, I am going to listen to some of my Audible book that I'm listening to right now. I need to think about what I want to listen to next. So Audible has been like a really great lifesaver for me because I don't have as much time as I used to to read and I like love... <coughs> I'm an avid reader, but most of my reading these days is like children's books, which is fun, but I don't get to kind of stay kept up on my own reading. It's like a little window with a woman looking out of it. It's kind of cute. I think I'll put her on there. Maybe we'll take a bite of bread and also find a word snippet. Get rid of all the extra ones and we'll use the one that says because she wished. <clears throat> there we go. I wonder if I need anything else on this one. Hmm. A bit of scraps. Okay. Let's get rid of these extra things that are in my way here. these around a bit so I can get to other things. That may be cute. Let's put that on there. I'm 
I'm not going to bother to ink it because like I said, I'm going to grunge these at the end. Blades of grass. That's so cute. Let's put it on there. I don't often take a lot of time in like these kind of videos to make pockets. I'm usually making like things that go in pockets. So I'm glad I'm actually making pockets today. <clears throat> Though I know I had like a box of window envelopes somewhere and I've been thinking about wanting to tackle a project for some of those. Although I'm also seeing a lot of people doing that lately too. And I always try to do something a little different than the rest of the people <laughs> Try to like not do the same thing I don't want unless of course I'm like taking part in a collaboration or I'm like crediting someone's you know video to say hey I got this inspiration here because I don't like to copy people without um you know putting my own spin on it and giving credit where credit's due and that kind of thing I think that can be a really exhausting thing when especially like larger creators <clears throat> do that to smaller creators and I'm not even just talking about in the junk journal community but in general that's something that I've seen is like larger um, channels will do the same thing as smaller channels and then not even mention where they saw it and that's no good because the thing is, larger creators probably have no idea how much of their um, their new subscribers actually come from smaller channels that are giving them like mentions because they have different communities that they've built in different ways. And then of course it works the other way around too, right? Which is why it's just always good to like reciprocate and be fair and how you... Um, participate in a community. That's what I try to do anyhow. I know there are a lot of people who mention me very frequently and they're wonderful. It's like a very dark piece of coffee dyed paper with a ticket on there. I don't know if you can see it, but I see it. It's there. <laughs> <clears throat> and my daughter just finished up another round of her EGO school, which is the Art Gallery of Ontario. They host a really great virtual school for kids um, ages kindergarten to grade three. And it's so great. It's like two months and it's every morning. Um, and it's so nice because it's like a time when I can, that I can add something like that to like our program and um, have it sort of like done for me. It's really nice. And she really likes it. And she's created a, quite a nice little um, sketchbook. I should do a flip through of it and show it to you. And they, they have like really thought provoking art. 
So like lots of indigenous art and lots of, you know, learning about land acknowledgements. Um, the instructor is Métis and then there's a really great guy who, um, he's an artist and an art historian and he does, um, his day is the African dystopia, um, I'm sorry, no, um, what is it called? Um, I can't remember, but it's essentially African art and it's, um, it's so good and he's really funny and he loves puns and I think the kids just love him so much. It's the African diaspora. Sorry, I couldn't remember what they called the class. They have like a name each day. Like they have one that's like, um, the African diaspora and then they have the indigenous art day and they have a science based art day um, there's like sort of five themes that they go through and it's really nice one is the natural world but yeah that's been a lot of fun these labels are ever so slightly too big and I don't want to cut them down it's this Mm, too busy, too busy. So this says treasure. It's like a little label. I like the label. Let me just go with that. It's kind of cute. And then I can come back to it. And if I want to add like a themed word or verse on it, I can later. But as is, I think that's cute. So I'm going to leave, I think, um, 15 minutes at the end to do the grunge and the dry and then um, show you the, the final product and do the count of what we made. to think about what to make for dinner tonight on a cold and snowy day. Maybe a big veggie soup. Maybe some roasted pumpkin. Hmm. A corn chowder, that would also be yummy. I got these little tiny Rococo stickers. And um, <clears throat> I don't know where they came from. They were given to me, but they're really not that wonderful of quality. They're probably like a Chinese, you know, AliExpress kind of thing. I don't think I'll be using them really for anything. Photo quality is one of my things, like I find it really annoying when you get anything and the photo quality is subpar. <clears throat> I was actually really surprised to see that even um, that can happen sometimes even in more expensive and fancy kind of paper, like scrapbook paper. I've seen some that like just doesn't have very good crisp quality and I'm like huh 
because it's so expensive you would expect that it would have a lot of high quality you know image images but you never know I think my favorite papers right now are like 49 and market and um, Minte. They're really nice. Okay. now I want to switch from using my little snippet bits here to maybe some stickers or something just for a bit of a different although I do have so many little snippets maybe I should try to just use them that's a little cigarette card let's use this whoops don't fly away birds got about eight minutes of this left anyways and then I've got to move on to the next stage here so maybe I'll just stick with what I'm doing I'm about to run out of those lovely pre-cut papers that were so perfect for this <clears throat> it's kind of great I wonder if we could use a little whale tail tab on one of these how cute that would be so if it's going to go like this and i would glue my whale tail tab i cut so many of these out when i first got the punch i was so excited that i found the punch so now i have so many of them that are just like hanging about hmm i don't like it <laughs> it's sad but true <laughs> let's just set that aside I'll use it for something else. Okay. Um, one to go, one to go. What do we have in here? That's a little flower. Yeah, let's do this. We'll go with this little piece of coffee dyed paper scrap. We'll That's another piece of that little flower from the 1920s scrapbook. It's just following me around here. I think this is the last piece of it though. Okay. How did I gouge my glue? <laughs> I find myself saying that a lot. How did I just gouge into my glue? Hmm. This, yeah, let's do that. Because this is the kind of thing that I would probably never use. Sometimes when I'm thrifting, I end up buying like some paper, something or other, and I get all this like pre made kind of ephemera that I would never use, like things for like baby albums or something like that. And so sometimes I hold on to it and I shove it into things like these bins and then. I just have no use for it and then I get into like these mission critical kind of states where I'm like okay let's purge and I like take all of that kind of thing and get it all out of my <laughs> studio because I start to get stressed out having things and containers and stuff like I don't actually let myself buy any more containers because I'm like no you don't need any more containers use what you have and don't create more so I'm trying to <laughs> prevent chaos here. Well, let's go with this white label. It's kind of cute.
my glue book is gone. I've got the big one now. I can use it. Okay. minutes <laughs> trying to hustle so I can get more of these done um, scraps use some old book page I need a little bit of color. Maybe, yeah, let's do this. We got one more before we have to stop doing this and then we'll set up for the next stage. Yeah, I think I will go with this typewriter. Okay, so it's time to stop making these and I'm going to set up for the next step. I have here my grunge box that I'm going to do my spraying and painting and stuff in. So I'm just going to lay these down in no particular order. Some of them may overlap each other. I'm going to put them all in here, I think. There should be room for all of them. Maybe not, actually. Maybe not. Let's just do... We'll do this in two batches, okay? So what I'm going to do... I, I'll, I'll use maybe one color for each. So I'm using um, Distress Oxide Spray. Hold on one second. I'm just going to pull the... There's a price sticker covering this over. It's it's rusty hinge, anyways. Distress oxide spray. So the first thing I'm going to do is I keep coffee and alcohol in a spray bottle, and I'm just going to hit it with some coffee. Be a little generous, you know. And I just noticed I still have this one covering that one mostly. Okay, so now I will use the rusty hinge. That's all I'm going to use. And then I'm going to do one more coffee spray. And then I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to dry it. So the other thing I do... One second. The 
is I try to use up the excess ink on things I'm going to back other things with. So I'm going to press this down just to soak up this excess because then you get like paper like that. So often you'll see like when I back things that there's like fun kind of painty paper on back, it's because I've done this. And it lifts up that excess ink. Here's one that I've used before and I'll just add another, another layer. Okay. So then I'm just going to come in with my heat gun and dry these. So I will dry them and come right back. Okay, so these ones are all dry, pretty much anyhow, not completely. Well, that one's not at all. Let's, leave. Let's dry that one a little more. Um, I'm just being impatient, but they're mostly dry. Um, I shall dry it when I, after I do the next stage. We'll dry everything again before I show you the very end of this. But let's get these ones out of the way so that we can lay down these ones. You trying to guess how many we've made yet? <laughs> okay, so this one again, I'm going to spray it with coffee generously here. And, oops, it's just my heat gun. I'm going to come in with some oxide spray. I'm going to go a little less maybe on this one. That's enough there. Because this is um, Uncharted Mariner, so it's like a blue tone. So let's see if I have some more paper here. I can just kind of use to squish down. Take away the excess ink. Fun. Another piece. Some of the digital that I printed incorrectly. So we'll use it as backing paper. Okay. All right, so now let's dry these ones up too, and then I'll come back to you with everything dry. All right, so they're all dry and I've gone ahead and actually put them into my Rolodex holder. I have this one. It's like a vintage one that closes up this way. And this is actually, I paid $2 for it apparently at the thrift store. Um, this is a really nice way actually to store this ephemera too. Um, I'm going to leave these right inside here and probably put my empty ones in there and know that this is a place I can go if I want to work on a project. So here they are. We did 26 altogether because she wished and see they turn there's the one with the cigarette card the another one with the birds little snippets the forget-me-not um, Victorian greeting that's the cabbage dyed label this is the one with the vintage wallpaper this little bit that hangs off I think it'll be okay though in here it might get a little smooshy but it'll be okay then this one you know, it's cute. You can just kind of go through. There's the window gardening, that ticket. And I love how the spray worked on everything. Another place or maybe another time. There's that little blades of grass one, a little bunny. There we go. So yeah, this was the intention of the Rolodex, if you're not familiar, is you would keep all your business cards in here attached to these little cards. Like here's one here from Kmart Canada Limited. That's an old one, um, but yeah. And there they are. And you can go both ways. I know this one's getting stuck because of the little 
hang off there but I'm going to keep them in here so that's it for me for today thanks for joining me and I hope to see you tomorrow for more Mass Make March <laughs>